Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to the Economics of Religion for Negroes, a reply, path 1. So please note that this is more of a response video than anything else. And of course our very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal of this video is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, truth tellers are not always palatable. There is a preference for candy bars, Gwendolyn Brooks and from Marcos Gavi. This propaganda of dissociating Western Negroes from Africa is not a new one. For many years, white propagandists have been printing tons of literature to impress scattered Ethiopia, especially that portion within their civilization, with the idea that Africa is a despised place inhabited by savages and cannibals where no civilized human being should go especially black civilized human beings. This propaganda is promulgated for the cause that is being realized today. That cause is colonial expansion for the white nations of the world. So ideally this should tell you where the aborigine wannabes and the so called we were here before, we have been here before, there was nothing like this slavery. this should tell you where they are heading to. But this synopsis. A close look at the history of the group tagged Negroes reveals a carefully orchestrated plan by the slave masters to ultimately obliterate their identity and leave no trace of them on earth. This is done systematically through identity change every now and then. The latest ploy of the slave master is the aboriginal narrative or Native American movement. And in this video, we shall be responding to a comment from one of the aboriginal wannabes making the bogus claim of how Negroes are now the same as Native Americans and the Negroes as a unique group in the African continent and different from Barbers, Tuaregs, Arabs, Hottentots, Bushmen, Pygmies, Caucasians, etc. And here is the comment from one of the aboriginal wannabes and it says to all my American brothers and sisters, research your own genealogy and stop listening to this propaganda. You are American. Your name and status has changed many times because they want to displace you from your land. He has a problem with the Nkalawe but can't debunk him. Note this statement very well. Look up Kurimio Ahau and many others who show you first hand documents and images. Roots was a lie and Alex Halley had to pay dearly for his crime. These people will not win. And here someone else replies him and he says, VKNYC, you believe that black Americans are native to America and we are not captured from West Africa. Why is it that the native Indians in Canada look like the typical native Indian you will find in America but different from the black American? Canada and USA share the same landmass, so there must have been some migration throughout history before the arrival of Europeans, which would have given rise to black American looking native Indian tribes in Canada as well. Although Canada also imported and used slave labor, it was at a smaller scale when compared to USA that you won't find much mixing between the natives and black slaves from Africa to create that black native admixture in Canada. People like Dan Calloway are confusing the offspring from the mixing of black slaves from Africa and native Indians in USA which started around the 16th century as the original native Americans which is totally untrue. So you can see from this comment alone that for any sensible person that has common sense not working for massa would understand that that claim is as bogus as it is a lie. But like we already know, the slave master is a subtle beast. He will continue telling the lie, including the likes of Denkalawe. If you notice, everyone from the community had called him to order. 
but he's not going to stop because he's not actually working for the Negro community. He's working for the slave masters. That's why. So if he was working for the people, ordinarily, he would have listened to his people to say, if you say this is not true and provide me with your proof and I see that there is sense in it, I will stop. They will never stop because the slave master, if you notice, even in his slave trade claim, in his lies of how Africans could have sold other Africans, he uses the hermetic groups and the non-negroes to do it or even some conditioned negroes so that's the same thing you see here the slave master knows that the negroes do not trust him enough and will never believe him so he looks for somebody that looks like them to help propagate or sell any dummy he plans to sell to the negroes so this should be one of your case studies you have to research this deeper look into the historical records look at what your forefathers recorded so that you don't allow yourself to be misled by some uninformed groups commissioned by the slave masters to misinform the people especially the negroes so one of the aboriginal wannabe called brian scott responded by saying the only person that's fake is you do your own research that is in response to us telling them that these things are not correct now if you notice one phrase they continue using is do your own research but they will never provide you with how they came about what they are saying no evidence no research but they want you to do your own research and the only research they want you to do is to believe that the so-called african americans today previously called negroes or black americans were indigenous to the land that's they were living in the u.s even before the u.s was created that's all these claims they are making even though we know they were commissioned by the slave masters so going further it says this is our response to the person that suggested that we are the people that are fake and we said do you even know the meaning of research just to show you how easy it is if you trace your history to 1900 you will arrive at whoever owned your forefathers as slaves be it indians or europeans so can you tell us what your research will show after that or between 1434 to 1900 and the same brian scott replied at the renaissance we are not all africans in 1821 many freed men from this land went to west africa and to this day are not called africans by natives there do do your research you see the same do your research that they keep saying as if they even know what it means everybody knows that when some negroes were freed those that fought on the side of the us so to say were freed and resettled in liberia that's what he's talking about in 1821 meanwhile the british did something like that in sierra leone in a place called freetown freetown is in a place called sierra leone so he's only believed that their aborigin is just because the people there do not call those that were returned natives or africans and that's because if you were to look at the history of the slave trade very well they were not returned to where they were captured from remember the capture was about destroying the entire community they burn it down if you looked at nigerian army today if you look at how they behave if you look at how they burn houses or cameroonian army in Biafra and in ambazonia that's exactly how the slave trade was done it was done by those armies now these people were returned to a place where they were not originally from or at least were not very known in that area for example those so-called african americans moving back to ghana certainly they are not from ghana ghana used to be called the gold coast the slave masters got more of gold from there than slaves the slaves came from the slave coast and the slaves moved away from negro land down to where you call southern nigeria today the bulk of them so now instead of moving them to where they were originally from they moved them to the gold coast unlike those of sierra leone and liberia they moved to where they were not originally from so chances are that the people there may not all accept them because they are not the same people and even if they were it's gonna be controlled by the government who are slave masters foot soldiers remember the negroes are not ruling anywhere anywhere they are ruling it is under the behest of the slave masters or their appointed foot soldiers back in west africa so like the fulanese so anywhere you see like governors in the southeast south southern southwestern part of nigeria they are foot soldiers to the fulanese 
who are foot soldiers to the slave masters in a feudal triangle which we shall show you one of these days on this channel but our interest is to show you how ignorance can drive a people to some ludicrous claims so the innocent ones will be claiming and believing this rubbish of aborigine while the slave master commissions those those you see propagating it most of them are controlled individuals by the slave masters and the other aborigine wannabe called vknyc and we may very easily discern that these are all fake identities they are using to propagate their lies knowing that some gullible people will believe them so he goes on to claim that Dan Calloway is not saying Africans and Indians mixed is black Americans today, which is what he says in his website. You see how they change and confuse everybody. He is saying we were here when the Europeans came. Do genealogy and some first hand research or simply watch Dan Calloway for yourself so as not to confuse others when they see you making the same mistake as renaissance agent so you see they are the first to always call others agent look at somebody that cannot conduct basic research and has been unable to provide any single documentation of where he is getting what he's saying from because we all know none of us today or alive today was born during this slave trade period so all we will base our research on are the accounts of our forefathers who kindly enough wrote books and gave an account of what transpired and another aborigine wannabe named diana remember it might just be one person one single person they just create multiple accounts and keep repeating all they are saying because the slave master understands that when a lie is told often enough it begins to look like the truth who will believe that the negroes can be debating back and forth about this today if you remember it was the same argument when they were changing from colors to negroes so you understand how this game works so they know that after a while the negroes short memory for sorrows will kick in then the slave master will have his way he might even go and put it in his books put it in his census records that these are aborigine because some gullible ones have bought into it it will pass through and that's it that will be the change the negroes now have a new name become a new creature in the sense that no history of them can be kept if you check very well you'll see that there is no recorded negro history of anybody alive today or any name beyond 1750 if you doubt what we're saying conduct your research or ask these aboriginal wannabes since you claim that colin boss told you this and that can you tell us the oldest negro recorded in life anywhere on earth that predates 1750 you will see that there was none and this one says african ancestry and slave trade historical information tells you that yes there was africans in the america before columbus now remember the place may not even be called africa at that time remember africa is a synonym for libya and only referred to that area where you call libya today a little above it up to the northern african of today's side the rest where negroes were from used to be called negroland or it used to be called Ethiopia or Guinea. So if they are saying Africans, are they telling us Africans as in those that were from Libya or Africans as in the Ethiopians? So you see that they are even confused in the real sense of the word, confused. And he went further to say, the slave trade tells you others than a small percentage of Africans taken direct from Africa with approximately 95% coming via the slave trade in the Caribbean. African ancestry tell you that the percentage of African American with Asian stroke Indian is very small. So please let us unravel the white lies and those wanting to keep the divided or whatever. But ideally you see that they make bogus claims, claims that benefit no one. There is no point in the claim because if you notice whether they are aborigine or they are not, the question becomes the evil done them. How do they get redress? How do they seek justice? So you see, that's the game of the slave master. It doesn't change. We're going to show you how, what they are playing at shortly. Please remember that the slave masters and their foot soldiers lack both humanity and common sense. So their deception follows only one pattern. It doesn't change. One pattern. So that is, they come in with a ludicrous viewpoint like we were here before. And you will continue debating that back and forth while their action keeps going on. You see how they have come in now to say the slave trade never happened. Remember jumping from looking for reparations 
to now saying that that thing didn't happen. So, what is the benefit of being here before to the Negroes and how does it address the evil done to them? Now, remember when they say they were there before because of their narrow-mindedness, like we told you, the slave master, like his food soldiers, they lack both humanity and common sense. So, when they are saying here, they are just talking about the United States. They don't see anywhere beyond the United States. There were numerous Negro slaves sold to Europe so to the middle east so to what you call north africa today remember that place wasn't called africa before then and remember this continent system was not how the world was at that time the world was seen as one complete place and then people were from different areas it wasn't continent and continent the way it is done today so that you don't think that when they say africa you look at the whole area they mapped and called africa as africa as it was no that's not the correct thing at that time, Negroes were known as Ethiopians, which you saw from Marcus Garvey's quote, where he said the Ethiopians. So that's the thing. But these Aborigine wannabes and the slave master's food soldiers, because of their lack of humanity and common sense, they don't even know what the history was like back then. So please, if you know any of them, just ask them, what do we stand to benefit from you being from there? You are still a slave there. And you may also have noticed that they never provide any facts or evidence. They just come in with a ludicrous claim. They do it a lot in sub-Saharan Africa too. Their food soldiers, the same thing. You might just be talking about some crime or some evil they committed or they slaughtered people. They will be bragging about it. The moment you say, yes, these are the people that did it, they come in to say, how are you sure we did it? But these are the same people that brag and tell you, give you reasons why they had to do it. Like you see the Fulanese killing people all over the place there. The Nigerian army was a Fulani, an Islamic slave-hunting militia. If you notice, the Aboriginal wannabes will not want to talk about that. They will not talk about the evils done to anybody. They just face their little space because of how they have been commissioned by the slave masters to misinform the Negroes and start telling you they were there before. Whether you were there before or not, how does it benefit anybody? What do you stand to gain from that? So you see how they're coming with an answer or a question that has no answer. And even if it has an answer, it doesn't benefit anybody. They use it to destabilize everybody. Take away your time and resources over nothing. That's who they are. It doesn't change. A little example is they claimed that Christopher Columbus wrote that he saw blacks in 1492, but cannot show anyone the diary where he wrote it. At least if we saw where he wrote it, Everyone will understand what he's talking about. Secondly, he visited the place after the slave trade had started. The slave trade started circa 1434. And this guy visited circa 1492. So if he saw some Negroes who were slaves there at that time, or even if they were not slaves, how does it translate to being aborigines? They also claimed that many explorers said the same thing but cannot provide either a name of one explorer or where they said it. So you see how ludicrous their claims are. Ambiguity. They usually deploy and leverage an ambiguity. Example, the comment, mostly all the explorers described the people they saw when they got here, Negroes de Terra. So what does that mean? Somebody says Negroes de Terra and it means that the people were there before. He forgets that there were people existing and the slave trade has started before this his 1492. So if the slave trade has started before then, what criteria are they using to base all their judgment on this particular 1492 incident? What about those that were there in 1400? What about those that were there in 1450? So you see how the slave master leverages on the absence of common sense amongst these hermetic groups and other conditioned Negroes to subjugate the Negroes. You see how they base everything as if Adam and Eve, assuming but without considering that the book is actually real, there was something called Adam and Eve by 1492. So that means the Negroes came into existence as a group or as a people in 1492. If they are not, then you need to find out what happened before that 1492. That's what research is all about. It's not to go and buy some ugly narrative from the slave master and be propagating it. Also, you will notice that they never talk about what will benefit the community, but instead, what will benefit Master? And of course, you know that Master was the name for 
the slaves to be calling or addressing their European or Indian masters at that time. So everything you do, if you notice, what on earth is the benefit of being Aborigine? And how does it accommodate the pain and sorrows and suffering of the Negroes sold to Persia, those sold to Europe, those sold to the Middle East, to Saudi Arabia, to Asia, to India, the main India that you hear about today, and of course to the Caribbeans. But they are busy telling you about Aborigine. Meanwhile, the United States as a country did not exist back then. It was just a plantation and a collection of colonies belonging to the Spaniards, the English, the Dutch, the Portuguese and so on. So you understand where this whole rubbish is coming from. Now, please ask them, what do you stand to benefit from these lies? And going further to see how their little tricks, childish tricks work. So one of them now came to post a comment and that's the same VKNYC. That saying, at Faith Works, read Christopher Columbus' own account of who he saw and he popped in a video link. This is a video they made just to show you how their brains work, how big their brains are. Remember, it was one of them that told us to catch a slave. You hit him on the head and carry him. That shows you that they don't even understand what is being said and that's why the slave master hides behind them, even in sub-Saharan Africa, the same group, because of their lack of humanity and common sense. So the slave master gives them guns to be killing people while he keeps stealing the resources because they lack brains. There is nothing good that can come from their thinking. So we went to that video. Like we told you, we know how they operate. We understand it because we have researched most of this and we have read the accounts of our forefathers. We saw what they wrote. So we try to look at things from their own angle because they are not here today to further educate us. But we know who the slave master is a subtle beast so in the video they now advertised one book called 103 amazing facts about the black indian of the western hemisphere later bound 2003 so that's when they wrote this obviously that's when the slave master started planning this remember by 1988 was when he used one jesse jackson to come and change from black americans to african americans the argument at that time was that it gave them an identity, made them identify with Africa. Now they forgot that in Africa there are Arabs. The, the Negroes were not Arabs. There are Hottentots. The Negroes are not Hottentots. There were Bushmen, of course, the Tuaregs and Babas. The Negroes were not others, but they still accepted an ambiguous appellation of African American. But that's by the way. So now they are now coming with the Indian thing. This book was only published in. 2003 and he claims to have 103 amazing facts about them now think about it a people that were existing thousands of years before columbus of 1492 and it's only in 2003 that somebody will remember 103 amazing facts about them now remember the question the first one we cited here asked how come they do not have the same black indians in canada so you see how unfortunate it is when you look at these people and how ludicrous their claims can be. But to show you how their foot soldiers work, their little sense, how it plays out. So you see in that video, the book is advertised for to be $230,000. And it was written by some unknown person called One Stachahan or P. Canyon or whatever he called itself. But then you will know that this is their game. So they obviously commissioned somebody to write the garbage but they put it at a price so that not too many people can read it then they will leverage on both the price and the fact that not too many people have read it to now say oh you see why they are hiding it and here is that video channel it says it's the aboriginal channel investigating the real story in his story that's like talking about history and his story so you understand their game he is now reviewing that book, the same book he claims or they claim has 103 amazing facts about the black Indian. The video also cited a book called An Inquiry into the Distinctive Characteristics of the Aboriginal Race of America and it was written by George Martin, medical doctor and published 1844. Now please bear in mind that by 1844 it was barely 20 years before the slave trade ended. So by that time they had frozen the real shipment of slaves from Negro land and Guinea. So he cannot say because he's writing anything here, it is the same as any one Columbus could have written in 1492 or whenever they are citing. Remember, they are not showing anybody that book anyways or Columbus diary, whether he wrote it in English 
or Spanish. Nobody knows. And remember, it was the Spaniards that controlled the slave market to the area before the British joined in 15 something. So if they are, keep, they are telling you things, you have to connect the dots. Because they are liars, it's very easy to get their things to crash, their lies to crumble the moment you apply common sense and adequate reversibility of the thought process to it. And here is one place the video maker quoted as proof that the Negroes looked exactly the same as the Aborigines. Now please remember in all these things, all we want you to look at is the fact that there is no benefit in whether or not the Negroes were Aborigines. It is a slave master's distraction tactics. So he wants to use it to say the slave trade didn't happen. That's what they are trying to do. So now they commissioned all these people you see saying it so that it will be one a distraction you can never come together to say we have been wronged we need to be righted two you will never look for where you are from you will think that's where you're from you will remain in the same several position because that's the whole game they said the negroes we are created to be slaves forever till the end of time so you need to understand that this is why we always encourage you to research biafra and ambazonia research bite of biafra the bulk of the slaves came from there what you call bite of biafra and benin but they won't want you to look in those directions because they understand that any day the negroes can come together wherever they are be it in the diaspora or in sub-saharan africa then their game will crumble that's why they commission all these people to bring in confusion so you see here he quoted that these facts however are mere exceptions to a general rule and do not alter the peculiar physiognomy of the Indian, which is as undeviatingly characteristic as that of the Negro. For whether we see him in the athletic cherub or the stunted Cayman, in the dark Californian or the fair borrower, he is an Indian still and cannot be mistaken for a being of any other race. He now claims that this shows that the Negro and the Indian are the same. So you see how ludicrous some of their arguments can be. So if you were to read this thing very well, it will be like saying that alter the physiognomy of the Indian, which is as undeviatingly characteristic as that of the Indian. Because if Negro and Indian were the same, you can be comparing two things that were the same. And above all, it goes further at the bottom to tell you that cannot be mistaken for a being of any other race. What more can anyone else see before making these ludicrous claims? But again, because they know they are lying, they have to look for every little thing to hang on to. That's all they are doing, nothing more than that. So one of the instances of the book from archive had some missing pages. So we decided to cite both of the materials for the purpose of this discourse. Remember, when the aboriginal wannabe see that page missing from one version of it, they will say, oh, it was deliberately removed so that people don't see it. The Negro believes conspiracies ahead of truth because he knows, yes, conspiracies against him. But he doesn't know the extent and tends not to understudy who the Negroes or who the enemies really are. Because if you notice, anybody you see saying African, African, does not understand that there are different races in Africa. It is those different races that were used against the Negroes. And that is exactly where the challenge lies. So when they hear that, oh, there is this conspiracy against them, they think that they have to rally around themselves based on that perceived conspiracy. Whereas that conspiracy may not even be real. It might just be a false positive. But then you see one of the places he cited claiming that this shows that the Negroes were Aboriginal and all those and they are Indians. So you understand where they are coming from. If you check their game, you will see that they're playing the same thing in Sub-Saharan Africa, which we shall continue to elucidate here as much as we can. And you can take it one step higher by conducting the research yourself, or at least looking for the books referenced and study them. Now, you see the Aboriginal wannabes claim that the books are faulty, the books are fraud, the books are written by the slave masters. But the genealogy they are going to conduct, the research and everything about it in the background is done by the slave masters. So you see why they want to divert you to that area, knowing that there you will be misinformed and you will have no argument to checkmate them. And it says maritime enterprise. One of the most characteristic threats of all civilized and many barbarous communities is the progress of maritime adventure. The Caucasian nations of every age present a striking illustration of this fact. 
their sails are spread on every ocean and the fabled voyage of the Organauts is but a type of their achievements from remote antiquity to the present time. Hence their undisputed dominion of the sea and their successful colonization of every quarter of the globe. So he said because they were successful in colonizing every quarter of the globe, that's why they made them there and colonized them. So you see how the slave master works. He comes from a very far distance from where he is going, so you won't suspect. Remember, all their plan is to say the slave trade no longer happened, so you won't have any evidence to say this is why the Negroes are downtrodden today. This is why they occupy the lowest part of the human existence or the human hierarchy, however you want to put it. And that's why we always tell you to look at Biafra, look at Ambazoni. And our reason is for you to see how the slave master uses his foot soldiers because he provides them the guns, provides them the weapons. His oil companies are there. His um, minerals and other mining companies are there. So if you were to fight for things like Biafra or Ambazonia, he uses his foot soldiers like we told you. They lack humanity. They lack common sense. And going further, you see another area they quoted in their video. And it says, The Negro whose observant and imitative powers enable him to acquire with ease the details of seamanship readily becomes a mariner, but rarely a commander and history is silent on the nautical prowess of his race. Far behind all these is the man of America. Savage is or civilized, the sea for him has had few charms, and his navigation has been almost exclusively restricted to lakes and rivers. So he claims that this is again another place that proves that they are aborigines. Now remember in all cases, try to remember that these people they are very narrow-minded. They don't. Their horizon is not very broad. They don't look beyond the United States. They don't remember that there is Brazil, there is Haiti, there is Jamaica, there is Persia, there is Europe, where Negroes were also exported as slaves to. They just limit their narrow-mindedness to the United States, and that's where their challenge is. If you notice the question that asked them, how come you don't have the same Black Americans the way you have? In, uh, in, a, in the USA, in Canada, they can't answer that question. They will run away and then after a few months, they will come back here and start this same thing again. This is not the first time this guy is writing this in Negro Terra or whatever he calls it. That's who they are. They keep saying it. Nothing will make, you ch make them change. They will continue saying it unless the slave master that pays them stops paying them. But otherwise, that's what they're going to keep saying. Because they believe that soon, the Negro's short memory for sorrows will just cave in and then they have their way. That's all. However, we also went to another channel that exposes the lies of the Ntalaway. And you can also go look at them yourself. Our interest is for you to move from the realm of listening and hearing to the realm of thinking for yourself. The only leverage, the only advantage the slave master has over the Negro is the fact that he is evil in mind by right by default but the negro listens to what he is saying instead of finding things out himself if you imagine this guy saying research it to yourself research it yourself you notice that they've not provided any single evidence but all they said are words you notice that they claim that all the books we are citing are all wrong and lies because they think or still believe that the negro will believe them based on whatever they say so you see how somebody who wasn't born when these books were written claiming that the books are fake but he has no evidence to prove that they are fake all because they think and believe that the negro listens to whatever the master is saying that's all nothing more than that so you see that channel is from yk the truth and here he says exposing the Callaway's deceit and plagiarism why recite another video script word for word he showed where Dan Calloway copied his own from. But meanwhile, he reports everyone else. So to understand who is on the side of the slave master, you will see where he supports lanes or lies in anything he is doing. Here you see another channel taken down by Dan Calloway and he says, Due to copyright takedown notice that we received, we had to take down your video from YouTube. Video titled this, Exposing the Fallacy of the Aborigines. This is to show you that these guys are working for and with the slave masters. And you see who reported it? Then Calloway. So now, if he was working for the community, by now, if the community is saying, you are lying, please don't misinform us. 
shouldn't he have slowed down at least whoever who's working for his community should be able to tell his community what is beneficial to them not taking them in a place that they have nothing to benefit from so you see the thing and moreover 98 percent of whatever he's saying are lies because if the foundation is a lie then whatever he's saying will also be a lie and here is another proof another channel as well because he compiled some of them to show you so you don't think there is anything we are telling you that is a lie or you can't verify yourself we are interested in you making the verification yourself so that you will know not that we said not that anyone else said but you know that's our interest so here this one says debunking then Callaway's copyright claims so his interest is just to take down anyone that counters them that's why you notice that we don't produce their videos directly we just take a snapshot of it so that he doesn't find a loophole to act on and also you can look for another video from truth about slavery research Ray Den Calloway and CC Ivet Canal released by YouTube that's another good material you can look at to see the arguments against his lies it doesn't matter if anyone comes here all those people you see saying it it might just be one person so they create multiple accounts and start presenting facts if you notice when that person asks them how come you don't have the same black americans the way you have them in the u.s in canada you notice that they carefully avoided that one their reason for doing that is so that you don't talk about it they believe that the negro's short memory for sorrows will prevent you from talking about anything that is not talked about by them that's all their game if you notice this same guy has been on this channel before some months back saying this same thing negro terra negro terra so when we checkmated him he left it for a while and he has jumped back that's who they are they don't bring anything constructive to any community the same thing you see in sub-saharan africa they are usually in power there all they do is to allow the slave master destroy the environment steal the oil and kill anyone that speaks up that's who they are they can't make any progress there and that's why unfortunately people are now saying oh we are not african not because there is anything wrong with the area but because the foot soldiers have been used to destroy and demonize the area so when you see them killing you think it's the same people killing the others the Fulanese are not the same as those they are killing you will see some african americans asking you oh how did they know who was who to capture who they should ask or tell us how the Fulanese know which communities to attack today that's the same way they captured and sold the slaves the same thing so if we take a deadline of 1770s and we look at a book called poems on various subjects religious and moral by phyllis whitley negro servant to mr john whitley of boston in new england now if you notice if you were a descendant of this woman for example and you were tracing your genealogy as being claimed by these aboriginal wannabes and the slave masters food soldiers you are going to arrive at the point where this woman was a slave to whitley which is how she got her name now are you going to say because you have the name whitley which is an european name for that matter you are now indian the answer would be no so how can how come they do not have names of their indigenous languages they now have european names or uh, slave masters indian names and now claim that they are aboriginal so what happened to your own language so why didn't it destroy the indians that were there and this book was published in 1773 and there we see the following now remember this is the oldest negro writing you can ever see so you don't think there is anything we are telling you that is not easily verifiable if you notice the same people complaining about the slave master are referring you to christopher columbus christopher columbus is not a negro so but they believe him they think he is god he didn't even provide you with any writing of where they are getting this thing so to show you how the slave master and their foot soldiers work their obvious lack of common sense and humanity is manifest in everything they do all you need to do is to look for it he is saying and basing everything about his race on one man christopher columbus so you see how senseless they can be but then here is what this woman wrote in her poems she wrote a lot of poetry at that time so you see what we're talking about here on being brought from africa to america it was mercy brought me from my pagan land now remember the likes of ben carson the likes of that pastor that said they thank god for slavery if not for slavery they would have been worshiping trees if you remember them that's the same mindset the slave master tries to tune them to 
and that's why these few soldiers are coming now to say oh they are aborigin the slave master understands that faith cometh by hearing to the negro so all you need is to keep telling him that thing even if it's a lie even if it doesn't make sense don't worry he will ultimately believe you it doesn't matter how you put it just keep saying it that's why you see them running around saying it even though they know it's a lie so here it goes further to say thought my benighted soul to understand that there is a god that there is a savior too once i redemption neither fought nor knew some few our feeble race with scornful eye their color is a diabolical die diabolic die remember christians negroes black as can may be refined and join it angelic train so you see some of the tricks they played at that time remember some of these negroes got there as children they now learned the slave master's languages so this one was the first negro ever recorded to have written anything called book so when you are talking about everything they are lying to you about that's why they are running to christopher columbus the same slave master they say is lying is who they are believing let us also reference the interesting narrative of the life of Olo de Quiano, Augustus Vasa, the African, written by himself, Volume 1, Second Edition, and this was published 1789. And there again, we see something of interest. That part of Africa, known by the name of Guinea, to which the trade for slaves is carried on, extends along the coast above three. 400 miles from Senegal to Angola and includes a variety of kingdoms. Of these, the most considerable is the kingdom of Benin, both as to extent and wealth, the richness and cultivation of the soil, the power of its king, and the number and warlike disposition of the inhabitants. So our interest is the fact that it's that part of the Guinea path. That's where he claims he was from. Now, the Benin you see today is the kingdom of Benin. It used to be very big, but it's being conquered and destroyed today by the Fulani. And the people can't gather around to themselves together because the Fulanis have the slave master hiding behind them, providing them with weapons. The only thing they understand is killing people. That's all. There is nothing you can say. This is one good thing they do. So when they steal from you, they give you a portion so that you can feel happy. They use their cattle and destroy your crops so that you can be hungry. And they bring you a little food. So you can sell your bat ride for a muscle of bread. You see how the game works. So our interest here is see that Equiano is saying he is from this part of Africa known as Guinea. Remember the British currency used to be known as Guinea. And you need to also ask yourself if they are pulling away from the EU at this time, what are their plans? Could it be related to now that they are going to Bitcoins? Could it be related to the fact that the EU charter may not be allowing them to bomb and destroy places like Biafra and Ambazonia the way they would wish. Remember they were the most brutal slave hunters. King James was a brutal slave merchant. So if you think he gave you the Bible, he didn't give it to you for you to make heaven. He gave it to you to make you a better slave. So don't be deceived. So we reference a letter addressed to the Right Honorable Lord Stanley, Principal Secretary of State for the Colonies, etc by Robert Jamison Esquire and this was published in 1843 and our interest is to look at the area Equiano referenced before we look at another material as well. So here it says, my lord, towards the end of 1841, I took the liberty of communicating to your lordship some particulars from a detailed account which I had just then received from Mr. Beecroft in Western Africa of his exploration of the Benin River in my steamer Ethiop. So our interest is for you to see the same Benin that the Guiana talked about and then you will see where it is and it goes further to say it had been supposed that this river would prove to be the main branch of the Niger by which access might happily be found to the interior without coming in contact with whatever but our interest is for you to see where it is then further down you see where it now says that such as was desired might be found by cross river which flows into Old Calabar River in the Bight of Biafra. To ascertain this, I instructed Mr. Beecroft to explore it, and I now take leave to place before your lordship the result of his recent investigation upon that river. Our interest is for you to see where they are looking at, 
and then be able to ask yourself how much information they gathered about the area while they explored them. Remember, they were physically present at that area, those areas at that time. The same way their oil companies are there today. It is those oil companies that are giving the monies you see in Europe and America. So don't think there is too much money they make from elsewhere. It is those companies that steal the resources. So when you talk, they kill you. They use their governments to make sure they impose their slave hunting partners as presidents and governors and everything you have there. Bear this in mind. And here is the map. Our interest is for you to see Bogo. Those names are no longer there today. And then you see Yareba. And you see Eyo or Katunga. These were all different places. But what did they do? They lumped them together and created what you call Yoruba today. This Yareba came into existence around 1808. You need to understand who this slave master is. He is not doing everything he is doing because he is super smart. He is doing it because of some of these his gullible followers and of course some of the conditioned Negroes. This is said to be around September 1840 according to them. But our interest is for you to see where we are talking about. So from the same map further down you see where the Benin he was talking about is. You see where it says Igbo. Now if you ask an average so-called Igbo today, he will tell you how he is not Igbo or how he is Igbo or what the spelling was or should have been. Some of them believe that Biafra was even created in 1967. So you see Bite of Biafra there. So the slave master knows all this, but he knows that his food soldiers, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. If you mention this Biafra in Nigeria, they will kill you. But then, it is not them, but the slave master controlling them because they lack humanity, they lack common sense. They won't see that the same slave master conducts referendum for his own people because of their obvious lack of humanity and common sense anyway. But at least you see where Equiano was talking about. Let's move forward. So please compare this thing here, this thing we're going to read now, with the aboriginal narrative. Remember, when Equiano wrote that book, he gave a different account of what his people were like to the world. And what did the slave master do? The same thing he's doing with this aboriginal wannabe narrative today. So you see where it says, To the reader, an invidious falsehood having appeared in the oracle of the 25th and the start of the 27th of April 1792, with a view to hurt my character and to discredit and prevent the sale of my narrative, asserting that I was born in the Danish island of Santa Cruz in the West Indies. It is necessary that in this edition I should take notice thereof and it is only needful for me to appeal to those numerous and respectable persons of character who knew me when I first arrived in England and could speak no language but that of Africa. So he didn't have any name or qualification for his name or his language at that time. He said the language of Africa which is understandable. Now if you notice very well if the slave master has his way this lie here can easily be used to now propagate the aboriginal wannabe narrative. You see that if this man did not debunk this lie against him, the aboriginal wannabes today will now claim that, you see, he was born in America. So that means he was aborigine. Whereas the guy is telling everybody that he was born in Africa. Now, notice that at that time, he favored the slave master to say he wasn't born in Africa. The same thing they are saying about being aborigine today. Our question to you is, what has where he was born got to do with what he was saying? You see, instead of debunking what he was saying as if saying whether it was true or not, the slave master being a master in lies now diverted the attention of everybody to where he was born. If you check all the write-ups again after this about him, left the issue of the slave trade that he raised and faced where he was born and why he wasn't born. That's the same game the aboriginal one of these are playing today. Instead of talking about the wrongs being done to the Negroes, wherever it is, be it in sub-Saharan Africa, be it in America, be it in Brazil, be it in Haiti or Jamaica, they are now looking for a distraction. You see how we are all spending time, how many hours we have all spent talking about Aborigine, Native American, Negroes and all that, whereas we all know it's a lie. The slave master knows how to introduce confusion and then leverages on that confusion and play smart. Whereas this his food soldiers, because of their lack of common sense and humanity, they buy into his narrative without thinking or asking what is in it for us? What is the point? What sense does he make? 
at least you look at Denkalowe for example if he was working for his community by now if they had spoken to him that this is not the right thing to do he would have at least stopped it but you see he keeps saying it because he knows the slave master is hiding behind him and he goes further to say under this appeal I now offer this edition of my narrative to the candid reader and to the friends of humanity hoping it may still be the means in its measure of showing the enormous cruelties practiced on my feeble brethren and strengthening the generous emulation now prevailing in this country to put a speedy end to a traffic both cruel and unjust Edinburgh June 1792 now remember if this Negro writing here was a so-called African American today or a conditioned Negro he would have been more interested in saying he is no longer from Africa than telling the people the problems his people were going through the slave trade because it wasn't them doing it to themselves it was the slave master and his foot soldiers the same way they are coming with this the aboriginal narrative today let us also reference thoughts and sentiments on the evil and wicked traffic of the slavery and commerce of the human species humbly submitted to the inhabitants of great britain by otto bakugano a native of africa and it was published 1787 and there we see that and before we go into it you see what it says he that stealeth a man and selleth him or maketh merchandise of him or if he be found in his hand then that thief shall die lord of god so you see how the slave master's book worked like magic that's why you see them hiring the likes of whoever to come and start telling you something you should have known by now was more of a fairy tale than anything else so you see the same book in all the books we have referenced from the first negro slaves you see that all of them anchored on the bible if you noticed from Phyllis Whitley to Tobacugano to Gustavus Vasa they all anchored on the bible your question should now be why do you think the slave master leverages on that book a lot so here in the contents it says that the Africans sell their wives and children nothing can be more contrary to their natural feelings and absurd so you see that it was impossible that they could have done it themselves this was hunt read and captured by the Arabs and the Europeans then of course the non Negroes in Africa like the Fulanese which they are still doing till today if you doubt what we're saying all we challenge you to find out is why would they be killing massacring communities and you notice that the slave masters media all of them are silent about it that should just tell you what is going on you don't need to research too for too much to find this out then the aboriginal one are babes you have seen their trick it's not a new trick they have always played that trick so here it talks about supplication of the enslaved africans our case considered before god because the negro had nobody to run to so that's the thing nobody supported them and those that supported them at that time were murdered so you need to understand it so today imagine the same way biafrans and ambazonians are suffering the slave master is not carrying it in his media because using his brainless foot soldiers he is stealing the resources so all he does is to give them guns knowing that they lack humanity they lack common sense so if you speak out they kill you that's all that's the same game they played then if you condemn the slave trade they murdered you so all those that fought against the slave trade from abraham lincoln to the likes of um Equiano, all of them they were hunted down in one way or another and murdered so don't think that there is anything we are telling you here that you can't verify yourself but then you notice that the aboriginal wannabes are now telling you that the slave trade didn't even happen so thereby rubbishing both their fault and memories of those that fought for the liberation of the negroes at that time imagine that's who they are this has not been long ago if you think it's been long you're seeing the books you're seeing the records of the negro slaves themselves to understand what we're talking about and here you see the man quoting the same bible and he says one law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you and therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you do ye even so to them numbers whatever and matthew 7 12 and all that our interest is for you to see how they leverage on it and he says as several learned gentlemen of distinguished abilities as well as eminent for their great humanity liberality and condor have written various essays against the infamous traffic of the african slave trade carried on with the west indian planters and merchants 
to the great shame and disgrace of all Christians, Christian nations, wherever it is admitted in any of their territories or in any place or situation among them, it cannot be amiss that I should thankfully acknowledge these truly worthy and humane gentlemen with the warmest sense of gratitude for their beneficent and laudable endeavors towards a total suppression of the infamous and iniquitous traffic of stealing, kidnapping, buying, selling and cruelly enslaving men. Now these criminals are coming to tell you that it didn't even happen just because they just want to sell their bad right for a portion of stew because they live in the United States. These West Indian planters, that's how the US came to be. It used to be a plantation. The British and the Europeans owned it as a plantation with the Negro slaves. That's why even their censors, they claim, oh, they, why are they minority there then? If they think they don't know what is going on, oh, how many Europeans did it? Even there today, they don't have an accurate census. It's the same game they play in Nigeria, which is subject of a different video anyway. Let's just move forward. So going back to the book we referenced earlier on that video about the Aboriginal race of America, which you can see by Samuel George Martin. Remember the video make a claim that the man died mysteriously. These are certain subtle ways they try to make you believe that because the man wrote the book, he, that was why he died. They forget that this one they are talking about 103 about the Indians or whatever they are choosing to call it now should be reminded that if a race had lived all the time from Adam till today and then somebody is looking for where they are from that should mean something must be wrong with that race which is what the slave master wants to hear all he wants to do is to run away from his evil and then you blame yourself for what he has done against you that's all he does his pattern follows only one style he doesn't change but then our interest is to read what he wrote here in the same book and he says I am well aware that this practice has been noticed by some navigators among the Polynesian islands. The instances, however, appear so few as rather for to form exceptions to the rule, like those of the Nassamons of Northern Africa. You see, Northern Africa, it's not Negroes everywhere. You need to bear this in mind. When you say African, it's ambiguous because there are numerous races in Africa. But when they say African, they're actually subliminally somehow referring to the Negroes. But they are food soldiers like we told you in Sub-Saharan Africa, they lack common sense, they lack humanity. We will show you what their game is and what their tricks are against the Negroes in a subsequent video. And he goes further to say, but I have sought for it in vain among the continental Asiatics, who if they ever possessed it, would have yet preserved it among some of at least of their numberless tribes. After the rapid view of the principal leading characteristics of the American race, note this, let us now briefly inquire whether they denote an exotic origin or whether there is not internal evidence that this race is as strictly aboriginal to America as the Mongolian is to Asia or the Negro to Africa. So the same Negro he's saying is aboriginal to Africa. If we assume, but without considering that the place was called Africa at that time, it used to be called Negroland. It's the same one. They are not telling you is aboriginal to America. And they are not the same and all that. You see how their confusion works. Our interest is to use the same book those people in that video were using. So you see how they just pick what they want to pick and highlight it in an effort to sell their lie. So here you see where it says Negro race. So if it was Negro race, will it be Indian? The true Negro confirmation requires no comment, but it is necessary to observe that a practiced eye readily detects a few heads with decidedly mixed characters in which those of the Negro predominate. For those, I propose the name of Negroid, Crania. For while the osteological development is more or less that of the Negro, the hair is long, but sometimes harsh thus indicating that combination of features which is familiar in the mulatto grades of the present day. So our interest is for you to see the mulatto grade of the present day and that's the mixtures. So when they're telling you about the Negroes being Aboriginal, they are lying and they know they are lying. And here he highlights the races and he says the Semitic or Syro Arabian branch, the Arabian family, the Hebrew family, the Hamitic or Egypto-Libyan branch. The Nilotic or Egyptian family, the Libyan family, the Mongolian race. He finishes writing the Mongolian race. And then you see here, he puts about the American race, the American family, the Tolican family, 
and then underneath the negro race you see where it says the negro family the kafarian family those are the babas the austra african or african or hottentot family the oceanic negro family the australian family then you put this asterisk or star whatever you put in the negro race it tells you that the negro race used to be known as ethiopian race so you see how they have changed everything so when you hear them say aborigine aborigine these are ignorant folks and then most of them are paid by the slave masters they can't read they can't research they keep telling you do the research do the research you think they know what research means they don't know what it means notice how they claim that all the books that contain everything contrary to their view are lies but they have not even provided one single book that is saying what they are saying meanwhile they were not born by then so you see how unfortunate and ludicrous their own idea can be in any case here we come to the end of this edition of the economics of religion for negroes a reply part one we thank you very much for listening and we encourage you to find time to conduct your own research or at least look for the materials referenced and study them yourself thank you very much for listening peace